In this video, we're going to take a look at five different niches I think will survive the AI takeover of Google search and SEO in general. It's no doubt that AI is going to make some sort of difference over the next six to 12 months in Google search. Plenty of people are predicting that it's going to completely wipe content sites off the map. And while I do think that is probably correct for certain types of websites, I also think that there is types of sites that can thrive in this AI environment. And that's what we're going to go through in this video. I'm actively building in some of these niches myself because I believe that this is the right direction to take right now. I could be completely wrong and the AI wave could come much, much faster than I anticipate. And it, you know, gets good enough where it can even do the stuff I'm talking about in these niches. But I think we're pretty far away from that still where there's plenty of time to build up large content sites that can be sold off for a nice sum of money. First up, we have news and entertainment. Now, that's a pretty broad category and I'll dive in in a second and show you what I mean. I'm not talking about big news sites that are going after kind of daily political news and stuff like that. That's not what I'm talking about. That's probably way too hard of a niche to get into. But if you go after news in a specific niche, I think there's opportunity there. One example, and I'll flag the website up on the screen here, is a Disney website. The owner of this was interviewed on Niche Pursuits. I'll leave the link to it down below. And I think that site's getting in the tens of millions of views per month, potentially like 30 million, I believe it was. And what they do is go after kind of news in the Disney niche. Now, Disney is just huge in general. You've obviously got stuff about the theme parks, stuff about all the new hotels coming out in the theme parks. Uh, you've got the movies, you've got the merchandise. So Disney is just such a massive spectrum. And obviously his site is getting you know millions of page views per month. There's obviously demand there, but it's a niche within a niche, right? But he's niched down to Disney and they cover that sort of stuff. Obviously they also do kind of evergreen content. You know, what time does Disney parks open at? Stuff like that. You know, what should I bring to Disney? But they're going after news content and they do really, really well with it. And when you do content like this, you also have the benefit of getting into stuff like Google Discover and Google News, as well as just general Google search. So hopefully you'd be competing less in the Google search results where AI is going to take over and more in Google Discover and Google News where it's really flagging quality content. Now you can do this in pretty much any niche, but one thing I would be kind of careful of is going after topics that are not going to last very long. There is certain news stories that will last for you know no more than six hours. And if you're not the first to put it out there, you're not gonna get enough views to cover your cost of writing it. So you wanna go for content that is initially news, but will also get some long tail search over a long period of time. For example, who is playing X Marvel character in the new movie? That is going to get a ton of searches when it's initially not announced, but if you rank for that, you're going to get long tail searches for a long time. So stuff like this, I think can do well in the long term. What I've also found is when you do this kind of new sort of content and not necessarily like news, but if a new product comes out and I'm writing articles or tutorials for that product, if I'm the first to get in the search results, I can actually go out there and kind of maintain my position above websites that are much bigger and have much more authority than me. And that kind of stays there and gives you that boost. So speed is your friend here. If you can be faster than the competition, you can do really well. Now, next up kind of runs on from this a little bit. Number two is troubleshooting. Now I've seen this mainly in the tech niche, like, you know, my TV won't turn on, how do I fix it? And then you can go after that for every brand of TV under the sun. And I don't think that AI can write good type of articles for this niche because the details and you know the steps and the you kind of the problems that you go through to solve that person's problem are very specific. And I have tried to get AI to write these types of articles and they're just too broad or else it's not specific to the actual TV brand, you know, the exact model number that you need. And that model number is a little bit different than the other model number that the AI thinks you're talking about. So there's a lot of problems there and the articles just aren't good enough. There is such a wide range of products you can do this for. Now, you're probably thinking about computers and TVs where error codes flash up and you search for that problem, you find a solution for it. It's a really good niche to actually be in and it works really, really well. There's a ton of long tail keywords. There's 6,000 error codes for every product that comes out. So you can go after these and do really well with it. Now, you don't have to do this in tech. For example, you can do this for, you know, coffee machines, problems with coffee machines or with or problems with home cooking goods. All products, tech products, or anything that's electronic 
it feels from time to time. This error codes, this you know light codes that flash up telling you there's some sort of problem. I think that can do really well. And where you can get an advantage here and where you can beat AI, well, AI can't really do this anyway, but just again, new products. There's thousands of products coming out every single day and they all have problems or issues. And if you can write articles to solve them problems before anyone else, you can get a ton of traffic, especially stuff like, you know, whenever the, the, the Xbox launches, right? There's tons of issues with it on day one. There always is because it's just like a mass testing session and people are doing stuff and things break all the time. If you're the first person to throw an article up on day one, you can really beat out the bigger brands that don't really go after these type of keywords and make a ton of money there through ad revenue. Next up is a specific type of travel content. I think that a lot of the travel niche will be affected by AI. As much as people think that, you know, you want per people's personal experiences and stuff from travel, I think a lot of people in the travel niche are going after queries like top five hotels or top five beaches to go visit. And AI does a pretty good job at coming up with these things. Now, another problem then becomes getting images for those places. You definitely want real images. You don't want AI generated images of a beach that you want to go to. You definitely wanna see what the actual beach looks like. So there's still a little bit there where a human interaction needs to happen, but in the travel niche, there's pretty much stock photos for every destination in the world. So that can kind of be fixed by using them stock photos. Now I have a blog called gosub20.com. It's a running blog that I set up as an example, just to teach people how to build an affiliate website or kind of a, a Mediavine website. And I put a couple of articles on there about my personal marathon experiences. On that site, I rank number one for Rome Marathon Review and Barcelona Marathon Review. They're pretty much the only two articles I've put on the site. The site has no DR, anything like that. I rank number one because it's the best article out there. It has my own photos in it. It has links to the hotel and photos that I took of the hotel that I stayed in. It has my personal marathon times. It has, you know, my paces of the marathon. It has my story about the marathon. It has my training details of how I trained for the marathon and the times I got. That stuff can't be done well by AI. Another thing that I've been looking into lately is walking the Camino Trail in summer. Now, with that, I don't want to go to a nameless travel blog and read about the Camino Trail. I want to go to a travel blog and read about someone that I know for a fact has been there, is showing me you know, the, the struggles, the highs, the lows, their photos, their stories, the interesting things and people they met along the way. I want that from the source that has done it. So I think like adventure travel, which is telling a story about a specific kind of thing, like a marathon or traveling the Camino Trail or paragliding in a certain country, I think stuff like that can survive and do really, really well. Now, that can be an expensive way to run a blog because you're gonna have to travel. You're gonna have to do these experiences, but if you have the opportunity to do that, you kind of have a moat around people who are simply, you know, top five hotels, whatever it is, like that stuff I think can be done well by AI. I think it's gonna get eaten up and there's gonna be so much competition. But where you're telling stories and experiences, I think you can really win in the travel niche. Number four is DIY content or tutorial content. This really requires detailed step-by-step -step imagery and explaining how to do something. AI is not good at this. One, it's not good at giving step-by-step -step guides to doing things with long-form content. It also can't produce photos of how to build a backboard for the wall behind a bed. That's something that people actually have to go out there and do, take photos of each step along the way, upload it and write detailed descriptions of it. I don't want just a, a bunch of wordy stuff. If I'm doing something like that and I'm following along, I want the step-by-step -step instructions with images of how it looked when they did it. And I know I want mine to look the same. For example, a couple of years ago during lockdown, I built a bar in my back garden. I was not going and just reading something. I needed step-by-step -step guides. I wanted photos of what it looked like in this step and that point along the way. What size did I need to cut this wood to? There was a lot of stuff that I needed to know. And I wanted, again, have that detail there, maybe even a video or an image of each step. Without that, it's a pretty useless article. It's probably one not gonna rank. And even if it does rank, people are gonna bounce off it and go and look for something different. So even if people do manage to rank in Google with shitty content to say the least, it's not going to work because people 
won't want to read it. People are going to bounce off the article. The person might get traffic because they're hitting all the on-page SEO signals and firing backlinks to it, but real people won't read it. They'll go back and go to the article that does have that information. It's the same with like tech tutorials, right? If you used Excel, you've probably Googled how to do XYZ formula. And you do not want to go to a website that just gives you like words. I want a photo of the formula. I want each step, you know, outlined with photos of how it looks every time you're putting in a new input or whatever it is. I want that showcased. If you're teaching someone how to install, right? If there's a 70 year old woman trying to install antivirus software on her computer, and you're writing a tutorial for it, you wanna give her big, massive images that show exactly where to click and what to do. AI currently cannot do this very well. It can't do it at all, quite frankly. So I think that is another niche. Step-by-step -step guides, tutorials, DIY, where it's very imagery heavy, I think will survive. So that's another niche, and there's tons of places you can go with that. Again, as I said, you could do like software tutorials, you can do uh, you know, DIY content, you can do woodworking tutorials, you, know, you can do stuff like, how to, you know, mechanic tutorials, whatever it is, maybe you have experience, you can do them type of tutorials with imagery. And I think this is what's so much more important now is having your own experience because if you're trying to write about something that you don't know about, it's so much harder to compete. If you're trying to write about something that is subpar content that you don't actually really know about, that's just gonna be so much worse than just probably firing it into an AI tool. You really need to have experience and I'd recommend going with a niche that you have a passionate interest in if you want to succeed right now. Last but not least is review content. I don't think this is gonna get eaten up by AI because the AI can't go and use a product. Much like the travel niche where you want them intricate details, like you know who do you meet along the way, what's the path like, with tech, you want, you know, what is the product like when it's opened up? Or it doesn't have to be tech, it can be reviews of anything. What is it like when you open the packaging? What is it, is it easy to build it? Is it, you know, how long does it last? What's the wear and tear like? There's so many things that people want to know about it that AI can't do. As well with the tech niche or kind of the review niche, you're kind of heading upon that news niche as well, or just new content, fresh content, it hasn't been spoke about before because it's brand new. It's a new product that's out. It gives you more opportunity to rank for, you know, people just haven't ranked for it yet. So you can go after it and do it really, really well. Again, you can do this in pretty much any niche. I would recommend going with a niche that has products that are fairly expensive, but you will want to be either buying these, borrowing them. You can go buy the product, review it, and then return the item. You can literally do that. There's tons of people do this for review content, especially when starting out. But once your blog, your YouTube channel, whatever it is, gets big enough, you'll get sent these products sometimes before they even come out, giving you a massive competitive advantage over people who don't get them before they come out because you can rank in the SERPs before anyone else. And again, you get that little bit of staying power if you're one of the first to write an article there. So that's pretty much it. Those are the five niches that I would recommend going into in the content site business in 2023. If you guys want more information on how I'm building up my business right now, I've actually went ahead and started a newsletter down below. I recently sold one of my sites for six figures and now I'm trying to go for a seven figure exit and I'm documenting it week by week in that newsletter. We have over 200 subscribers right now. Go ahead, click into it. There's five issues already out that you can go ahead and read. I'll leave a link below in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video.